Hi, I want to try to answer some questions uh, that have been posed to me through uh, through the channel, and I really wanted to um, try to address each and every one of them, as well as try to work on future videos of giving you information. But the the um, the amazing thing is is that I really don't dictate when I release something or when I say something because it appears that um, whenever my hand is in it and I'm making a decision, God seems to have a different agenda. So um, I really, just to help you understand, I follow precisely what God asks me to do and um, I cannot express to you how urgent some of the things that he asks me to say actually is. And it takes, um, for me, a tremendous amount of uh, posture to remain calm myself for you um, on your behalf because I can see and I can feel your anxiety um, I can feel your angst and your fear and um, it is not my intent to cause fear or anxiety uh, but you cannot raise alarms without causing those things. And understand that when Christ said, be anxious for nothing, um, that means that you don't need to be anxious for anything. When you're in Christ and you know who you are. Now I've received a tremendous amount of uh, hate. I've been called the Antichrist, I've been called Satan. And just so you know how I handle the channel, um, I don't have any problem with dissent or disagreement in any way whatsoever. Uh, where someone wants to refute something, where there will be uh, a positive outcome for it, regardless of how it ends up. I, I don't, I have no interest in being right. Because the reality is, no matter what the argument is, I will never be right, and you will never be wrong, and you will never be wrong, and I will never be right. Because in the middle of that is truth, and truth is unalterable. We're not going to alter that. So an argument is only reserved for yourself. And it's, a, uh, it's an exercise in futility when it comes to the truth. All it is is it's reestablishing in your own mind what you believe to be the truth. So it's a reinforcement. And the anger that you have and that you receive and that you read from Christians all over the place that get angry at some of the things that I say. That's because the faith that they have built themselves on is worthless or they wouldn't be angry. They're only angry because it's tearing it down and they can hear the truth in what I'm saying. Otherwise, they would have no need to argue it. I don't argue the truth because it is what it is. When it's been shown to me as true, nobody can say to me anything different than what it is. No one's going to alter that. The only way that I would feel frustrated is if somebody altered that truth somehow. But here's the reality. If they altered that truth in me and by what they said, then there is a powerful message in that that if they could alter that truth because of what they said, then something that they said made a whole lot of sense and logic applied. And considering that we're made in the image of God, uh, I don't want to downplay who you are, who I am, or who any of us are. In fact, I'm trying to help you understand exactly who you are. And so I don't judge you, any of you, because just because you don't know who you are yet, doesn't mean I get to determine or I get to judge that. I'm fearful of judging a person precisely because I don't know who they are in God. He might have a different plan for you and who you are, even though you don't know it yet, can be much more important than I know. So I can't judge you. So I wanna go over that, but let me, I, I, I feel that it's incredibly important right now. It's one o'clock in the morning and um, I had no intention of making any kind of a video right now, but God pressed on my heart and literally dragged me out of the bed and I threw on some clothes because I needed to make this. Um, and I want you to know that that's how I react to things. I don't do anything for myself. I wouldn't be up at one o'clock in the morning. I'd like to get some sleep. But in response to some of the things that have been received, and to con received on the messages and to continue what I'm trying to explain to you 
because I couldn't just dump this on you. I couldn't just throw all the information in front of you because it staggers the mind so greatly. And this is a troubling thing because you, you have to take some new foods. You have to take new foods a little bit at a time. Otherwise, you'll just vomit them up. If you've gotten too used to a certain type of food, you can't do that. And it's the same with this. But what I'm explaining to you here is precisely what John speaks of when he speaks of eating the scroll. The scroll that is as sweet as honey, but then made his stomach very bitter. That scroll is the truth. That scroll is the truth about what you didn't know and how you've been deceived. And the truth is sweet like honey, but it will definitely make your stomach bitter because the truth is far uglier than any fiction you've ever seen. And I promise you that the things that are about to take place in this world, the things that are coming upon this earth are going to challenge everything in your mind Everything you thought was possible will be wiped out. Everything you thought was impossible will be shown before you. So when it speaks of God coming down, the Antichrist God, that will take place and he will do wonders just like God. And he will prove himself to be God. And the vast majority of people in this world will be deceived by this. And the reason why they'll be deceived is because they've been eating the wrong scroll. They haven't eaten the truthful scroll. And I'm going to read some of the things that are going to articulate to you from uh, some of the other stuff from the video before. So when I speak of Satan exalting himself on the throne and making himself God. Now when he did that and understand that this is his domain. He was given this earth. You notice in Revelation it says that Satan will be let out for a little while. Well, this is that little while. You have to turn things upside down just like Scripture says, just like Isaiah says. And you have to look in the dark places. The dark places where the, is where the truth resides. And you can't avoid these dark places and think you're going to know the truth. You're just not. And this job that I have, this thing that I've been asked to do, isn't something that someone invites upon themselves. Because it is an entire separation from this world. So when I beg you to hear my words, I know that there are those of you that have ears to hear and you're intended to hear it because you're already awake. But there is a longer process to this. So you are waking up. You are going from death to life because you were born into death. This is death. And until you know who you are and you know that you came from someplace other than here, that you were brought here into death. It's going to take a while. Now, many people have called me a Luciferian because some of the things that I've talked about, I quite honestly, I didn't even know what Luciferianism was. All I have done is stayed away from anybody else's teachings, stayed away from anybody else's understandings, because the last thing I wanted to do is to taint in my own mind and allow the enemy to distort what God was trying to show me in the word and the rest of these ancient scriptures with somebody else's opinion. The things that I bring to you are purely from what God shows me. And if that happens to be truthful about somebody else's belief system, well then there's something there. So Luciferianism, as I've learned, is very real. And it's impossible for me to disclose the evils of this world without touching upon the belief systems of those that are evil in this world. So call me a Luciferian all you want, but I am not anything close to honoring or worshiping Lucifer. In fact, I'm exposing him. And that's my job. So I'm going to read to you a few other things that are going to confirm to you what I said earlier in the earlier video. And that is that the enemy has taken the word 
and he has taken over the church and he's altered it. The truth and the lies reside in here, all of it. And his lies become so evident and they become manifest right before your very eyes when you understand how to read them. And that is the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Now, as an example, and I'm sure many of you will understand this, if you read Romans 13, you tell me which God, the God of peace and love and mercy, the God that created our eternal soul, not our flesh body, and not our flesh world here. Romans 13 says, Submission to the authorities. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the, the authorities resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. He is God's servant for your good. The authorities, the ones imposing on you whatever laws that they choose to pass. Now what kind of God would tell you to honor the governing authorities, the governing bodies, blanketly? He wouldn't. Because God knows that man is corrupt. And God knows that government institutions are corrupt because they're made by man. Jesus was tearing down every single government authority by demonstrating how they were altering the word of God and their law. And how, when he said to the Hebrews, your father is Satan. Now many of you are going to hear what I'm saying here. Because God, the peaceful, loving God, the one that doesn't trust man because he understands what's in them, Jesus, who didn't entreat men because he knew what was in them, who was frustrated with the apostles when they couldn't hear what he was saying, and he said, how long must I bear with you? Let me continue with Romans 13. For he is God's servant for your good, as I said. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. So God's wrath is executed by the governing authorities, by the police, by the FBI, by the CIA, by the government institutions, by the governments of all of these countries all around the world. God's wrath is executed by those men executing on laws. Now, it says, do what is good. Okay, well, how simple is that? Do what is good. Well, what is good is what they say is good. And what is bad is what they say is bad. Not what God says. There's no description there. This is literally a blanket. This is a blanket law for the enemy, not for God. But yet, it uses God's name to demonstrate it. And I'm going to give you a, another example here. Colossians 1.16. So when you doubt that all of this is the enemy's and that he uses God's name to exalt himself and put himself on the throne and say, I'm God because he is the God of this world. And he's gonna show up and show his face, and he's gonna show you wonders, and that will be the Antichrist. And when he does, he's gonna do such amazing things that everybody will believe he is. And he will know this scripture. In fact, this scripture is his. So both the truth and the lie is in the same book. But quite honestly, even the things about Satan aren't even a lie because they're right here in front of your face. So it is the book of truth. The book of truth when they said that Satan exalt himself, exalted himself and put himself on the throne of God. 
He did. He even took his name. So Colossians 1.16 For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Now why the focus on the authorities? And why the focus on the invisible? and the thrones. That's because the principalities, the invisible that you battle every day, the ones that manipulate, that demonize the things that are God's, those are His. Not the God you think you're worshiping, but they are Satan. He owns them. Jesus begged you to hear him. He begged you to hear these words. Revelations articulates all of this. We are living in the church of Laodicea, the one that God will spit from his mouth. You are quite a different being than you understand. You do have eternal life. And God, the real God, truly does love you. Your spirit was manifest in this clay. And in this clay, you obtained death. And you're brought and born into sin and into slavery. How can you be born into sin if this is God's? You're born into sin because you're born into his domain, the enemy. And the things that I'm saying right now are putting him on notice. Because my job is to speak these and to be a witness about these things. And to witness to you about these things. The things that God is showing me. And he's reminded me, believe me, God's reminded me that I need to speak these words or your blood is on my hands. And I just can't have that because I love all of you way too much. Because the one thing that I do know that he has shown me crystal clear is that every single one of you, every single one of you is truly my family. And where we come from, where we are first established is in his house. And all of these things are not going to be able to be shown to you right now. But just like the word says, all things hidden will be revealed. And believe me, they will. I have no question about it. So my urgency in these videos is only because I'm doing what I'm asked to do. I'm not trying to raise alarms and scare anybody. I'm not trying to terrify you. I'm trying to wake you up to a truth that you must hear. And it doesn't matter to me if the Christians come and attack me. I don't hate them. I love them just the same. And it breaks my heart for them to be so deceived that the vast majority of people, the vast majority of Christians out there are waiting for a coming deception, not understanding it's already here, and it's been here for a very long time. To God, every day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. Your clock and your timing of things is absolutely distorted by the programming that you have. Please hear my words, and I'm going to continue to make these videos, and I'll reveal things to, to you in these pieces. I would love to be able to give you a lot more information, but these pieces that I'm giving to you, you need to digest these. Time is really quite short. The word says that no man knows the time, the hour, or the day, but it does say that we know the season, and this is the season and things are going to be taking place more and more rapidly. And it is my hope that I give you these things, that your mind would be opened enough, 
that then all the things could be revealed to you. Because what I do know is that when one thing is overturned, it alters a bunch of things. And you've already experienced this with things that I've explained to you. And you're experiencing it with the stuff that I've just spoken to you right now. So if you want to have an argument with me or a debate, that's fine. The word says, bring me the debater of the age. For the foolishness of God will bring low the wisdom of man. So the wisdom that you believe that you have and you choose to attack, that's fine. But bring the word and prove me wrong. Because I can promise you, you bring me deception and I will wipe the floor with that deception. So unless you want your feeble faith to be taken apart piece by piece, then don't do it. But I honestly want you to. I really do. Because iron sharpens iron. And when you do bring that, it allows everybody else to see the things that I'm exposing in living color manifest before their very eyes where I can destroy the deception that you've been indoctrinated with by the enemy and the apostate church that you're in this very hour. I would say to you, don't go to your church. Stay home. Read your own word. Allow God to teach you. Stop being taught by these men. They're not telling you the truth. And if they are, the church isn't a full house and it doesn't have 25,000 members. Remember that it is few that find this gate. I don't care about how many subscribers I have. I only care that the ones that are supposed to be here to hear it, hear it. If that's five, so be it. If it's five million, so be it. It's still a few. So please, continue to pay attention. Subscribe, share. That's the only thing that you can do when people ask me what to do. Just subscribe and share. I'm not monetizing anything. I have no interest in any of that. So please, that's how you could start doing your part. And I read every comment and I read every email and I try to get back to every text. But I am one man. And I'm doing everything I'm asked to do. Know that. And I appreciate all of your prayers. And for those that support and send me your prayers and your positive thoughts, it is so much appreciated. But those that thank me, don't thank me. Because this isn't mine. Not a single word. And time is very short.